Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now let's discuss the impact of cryptocurrency on Nigeria's economy. The impact of cryptocurrency on Nigeria's economy is multifaceted, particularly in promoting financial inclusion. Digital currencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum provide easier access to financial services for the unbanked, while also simplifying international remittances with lower fees and faster transaction times, which play a crucial role in Nigeria's economy. The rise of cryptocurrency in Nigeria is driving employment opportunities in the tech sector, but faces regulatory challenges due to the government concerns over fraud and money laundering. Economic diversification is enhanced as cryptocurrency adoption fosters digital innovation despite the volatility risk affecting investors and financial stability. Now, joining us to discuss this is Frank Eleanya, is a senior financial analyst at Tech Cabal. Good morning, Frank. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. So uh, we're talking about cryptocurrency. I want to first get your assessment. What is your assessment on cryptocurrency in Nigeria and how people have embraced it so far? I know it's been here for the last couple of years, um, but I want to get your take. How have people embraced it so far? And what is your own assessment to cryptocurrency in Nigeria? Um, cryptocurrency in Nigeria um, has, sudden, uh, ha has certainly um, gained uh, a lot of uh, um, a attention, especially from the consumer perspective. Um, a lot of people have uh, um, adopted it and are using it for different purposes, uh, majorly for trading. Um, when I say trading, I don't mean buying and selling. Uh, well, that, that's the way you look at it and say, okay, it's also buying and selling. But um, um, buying a crypto and then uh, leaving it on your um, exchange and waiting for uh, the time that it appreciates and then you sell it off, that's, that's a form of uh, trading uh, mm -hmm. that people are, or like they are hedging on it, you know. So there's hedging going on. There's also uh, some people who are also using it. Uh, um, a few people who are using it uh, as a uh, as a means of exchange. You know, um, it's not yet legal tender in Nigeria um, mm. because of uh, the uh, position of the central bank of Nigeria, which is in charge of uh, the monetary policies in the country. Um, the central bank still ha has not lifted a ban on banks uh, mm -hmm. dealing with uh, crypto exchanges. Um, so there's still some form of uh, big, uh, bigness in that, in that area. But the Nigerian um, Securities and Exchange Commission um, has made the most uh, move towards embracing cryptocurrencies in Nigeria in terms of regulation. Uh, they've uh, they've uh, come up with uh, um, some form of a regulatory uh, um, environment that allows the uh, cryptocurrency um, businesses to thrive and also to be recognized as a part of the um, economic uh, um, uh, um, as part of the economic uh, activities in the country. Uh, but for that to be fully um, optimized and um, become maybe beneficial to the Nigerian economy the CBN um, has to be on board. Um, they have to, first of all, allow the banks to be part of the uh, of the ecosystem to provide services, to provide banking services, and maybe in some in some ways also, you know, participate in the market. But um, the CBN hasn't done that. So at the moment, all right. So at the moment, you still have some cryptocurrency um, exchanges that has been licensed to operate in Nigeria, but can't do much because of the fact that um, they can't transact um, with banks and they can't uh, transact also with their consumers. But um, I think we have moved from where we were, say, in 2017, 2018, um, to where we are currently. In 2018, there was a total shutdown or a total ban uh, by the MFLA-led CBN, you know, and it continued up until uh, 2022, you know. Um, but there seemed to be some opening, you know, of, of hands, of uh, there seemed to be some understanding from the government to say that we want to be... Uh, we. We, we want to understand what's happening in this market. 
but they are being uh, they are taking it gradually. Uh, I, I believe maybe in a very short time, we'll probably get to the point where the CBN finally opens up and says, okay, everybody can be part of the cryptocurrency uh, value chain. But looking at that, uh, looking at the impact on the consumer part, I think that cryptocurrencies have sort of created some form of uh, alternate employment for a lot of people. I know some people who have become traders, uh, crypto traders, as a result of uh, cryptocurrencies and have made some money um, from that. And then also there are people who have become analysts, some people who have become teachers who have done a lot of things, you know, using cryptocurrencies. So it's created some form of employment, but mm. that needs to be formalized um, into the general economy so that the economy itself can benefit from yeah. the cryptocurrency activities going on in the country. Yeah, I was just even going to ask that, you know, um, what ways has it contributed to Nigeria's economic development and even some sectors that have benefited from it? Because I know that cryptocurrency is the new thing right now, especially with young people, young people who have transitioned into tech and they've tried to, you know, hone the space, use it to their own benefit. But for Nigeria at large, how can you say that this has contributed to our own economic development and what sectors specifically? Specifically, can you see have benefited from this tech? Uh, I, I think um, it, on a general level, cryptocurrency um, or let's say the blockchain from which mm. cryptocurrency... Mm. I think we just lost Frank's audio. Anyways, we've been speaking about the impact of cryptocurrency on Nigeria's economy. And, you know, Frank has just been trying to let us know how it has created jobs for several people. So a lot of people have transitioned into tech, into whole, the whole cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and blockchain, all of that. And they've been able to use it for their own benefit. But one thing I was going to, you know, just ask him was, um, is this supposed to be a substitute for our banks? Because I know that cryptocurrency is um, a tool, especially for the young banks, the people who need to do some trading, if you need to do international transactions, cryptocurrency helps with that. And one of the issues that the federal government has is, you know, fraud, money laundering, because you cannot really put a leash on this. And if it just goes haywire, then that's it. But how, one question I was going to ask Frank was, how do we ensure that there is a balance between, um, you know, having those transactions, but then there is still safety and there is no fraud involved, there's no corruption when it comes to cryptocurrency. But I think it's a good way, it's a good tech um, solution that a lot of people, a lot of fintechs, you know, are doing right now. Crypto, cryptocurrency is almost like the new best thing on the block. And I think the most beautiful thing is the fact that there is job creation for people because in Nigeria, um, in fact, what we're discussing earlier on was just still talking about, you know, job opportunities and job cuts um, because of, of course, the, um, the, the new minimum wage that needs to be paid. But with cryptocurrency, I'm sure you can just learn it. You can decide to go to a, a school, just learn how to use the tool and then you've created a job for yourself. I don't know if we'll have Frank back. Hello, Frank. Hello, Frank. Can you hear me? I'm here. Okay, fantastic. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. You went off for a bit. Okay, so you were just telling us about the, the benefits or, or rather how it has contributed to our economic development and yeah. also sectors that probably have benefited from this tech solution. Okay. Yes. So, um, so you have the banking sector. It, it, it's uh, is something that um, that we can look around how it can benefit them without really putting them out of relevance. Because I think the fear uh, for the regulator is that um, if you don't have a, a, a hold on cryptocurrency, um, there's the tendency that uh, everything um, becomes uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. You know, you, um, which is also the fears around money laundering. Um, fraud and all that things. Um, we are we are aware that uh, some terrorist organizations uh, are beginning to prefer using um, cryptos um, to collect their ransom. You know, but that's not to say that that's the only place that um, ransoms are paid. You know, uh, but um, ransoms have been paid in 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 fiat 
you know. Um, so there are different ways it can benefit the, um, the economy. We also have in the agriculture sector, the blockchain can also help to uh, decentralize um, agriculture. You talked about the financial inclusion. At the moment, maybe not so much it, um, is being done in um, to financial inclusion. Why? Because if we're going to use cryptocurrency to provide financial inclusion, then we also have to build the infrastructure, the um, in network infrastructure that will make that happen because um, cryptocurrencies rely on uh, power. That's number one. The second one is the internet. Um, you can't do much without um, without the internet. So you, where 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 the internet is not uh, functional or is uh, um, has some level of quality, um, you will have issues making some transactions there. You know, so if we can break that down, it will be the, one of the best tools for us to bring a lot of people on board and and, and make them financially included, you, you know, and part of the economic activities. So I think that's where the concern of the CBN is. Um, how do we get um, the part of this market in such a way that it benefits the economy and it doesn't erode any revenue uh, that that has accrued to the government, um, there are no hard answers to that. There are no clear court answers to that. Even the U.S. are still trying to understand um, how they will be a part of it, which is why they have not given a, a blanket um, um, statement to say cryptos can can operate or um, do whatever they like. You know, so every government is trying to see how they can build some form of. Um, regulations around cryptocurrencies and and ha look at how they can maximize the benefit. But if we're talking about job creation, it's it is one of the best tools for um, for job creation. A lot of people can just um, on your phone, on your device, whatever you have, and know that you can create a job for yourself there. You can learn blockchain. You can um, do a lot of things on on on. On blockchain, you know, um, and then also the many tokens that have come out, you know. So there's a lot to benefit, um, but there's also a lot of caution uh, that needs to be applied and a lot of learning that needs to be um, hard. Many people needs, need to be educated, even those who are trading. So many of them trade just because um, they saw somebody who's making money, so yeah. they decided to go into it. They don't even know why exactly they're going into it. They need to know, so they need to study that. Uh, so mm -hmm. there needs to be some education, constant education going on around cryptocurrencies um, so that people don't just go there and then become victims of a fraud and a cyber, um, cyber criminality. Mm. So um, there are reports that cryptocurrency tries to um, disrupt traditional financial system and also um, probably take control over the monetary policy. How do you think the government can ensure that they still have control over this? Especially if we're talking about, you know, fraud, money laundry, and, you know, crime in general. How can the government stay on top of this? Are there certain policies that they need to put in place that could just be the checks and balances for this, but then we still have this tech solution that helps us? You know, for every new technology that comes out, there's always that fear that it's going to disrupt something. But at the yeah. end of the day, we all start to understand, okay, this is how this one can exist alongside this other one. You know, um, there will ultimately be that other part of that business that will go out of uh, um, sync or that will no longer be relevant, you know. But um, in terms of disruption, it is too early for us to say um, the cryptocurrency market is going to um, disrupt the financial system or maybe remove the bankers from where they are. Think about what has happened with fintech. There was a time in 2017 and 2018 that everybody said, uh, before you know it, that the fintechs will buy up all the banks. You know, We are in 2024. Um, no, no fintech has bought any bank, uh, um, <laughs> as far as I know, um, in Nigeria at least. Um, in, in other countries, some fintechs are beginning to do that. But it is not that fintechs are going to take over the banks. The banks have their relevance. The fintechs are going to have their relevance. The cryptocurrency market will have its relevance. Then the banking um, sector will also have its relevance. What needs to happen is how do we fuse cryptocurrencies to be part of, to create more efficiency in the banking sector? You know, um, How do we use the blockchain to make uh, transactions a lot faster? How do we use the blockchain to make customer experiences a lot better? than they are today. 
how do we use uh, blockchain you know to track data customer uh, consumer data in the banking sector so that we can offer services and, and innovations that makes that make their lives a lot better than it is i think that's where the discussion should go to and not just about cryptocurrency or bitcoin bitcoin is just one of the cryptocurrencies you know so but what we have fixated on how do we you know uh, how do we regulate these uh, cryptocurrencies and all of that then we lose the the bigger picture which is the blockchain that uh, that enables all of these things to happen uh, it was one of the problems that we had or or the mistake uh, like i like to call it that the cbn did with uh, trying to go and uh, build itself uh, um, a CBDC, that's a, a central bank uh, uh, um, uh, this in, uh, digital coin, you know, which is the e-Naira. And all of us have seen how the e-Naira performed. It, it, it was created out of fear, you know, that something was, uh, that the cryptocurrency was going to overtake um, the banking sector. So the CBN thought, oh, we'll create our own coin, and that coin will now override the Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, the Bitcoin is still here. Um, the e-Naira is no longer here. And if we make that mistake again to go and say we are going to do a CBDC um, without clearly thinking about how it's going to work alongside the cryptocurrency market, how it's going to work alongside the blockchain development that we're pursuing. Um, it will end up like an e era. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where the thinking has to evolve to. It needs to look at the bigger picture. How do we create efficiencies in all our industries? How do, uh, how do we make people um, get better service? Um, from from each bank that um, that we currently have, and how do we also use it to attract investment into the Nigerian economy? That's where the clear thinking has to come from. And they have put in parameters that says oh, you you can do this, you can do that. This is the limit you can come, and this is how far you can go. You know, so everybody knows this is where yeah. we are playing, and this is where um, our our red line is. So we can't. We can't go beyond that. And everybody, it, it becomes a fair market for everyone to play in. Mm. So I want to talk about um, the social and youth impact. Now, we know that the younger generation, the youths are the one that are really, really into tech. But I want to ask, you know, what is the economic impact on them? And also, um, cryptocurrency is being used as a tool, especially when it comes for entrepreneurship and innovation. How do you think that the Nigerian government can work in tandem with everybody to unnest this and drive our economy better? Again, it boils down to changing the mindset of uh, those in government. Um, you, you, you need officials who know how to be intentional about mm -hmm. policies, who know, who know how to do some research, and who knows how to empathize to say, why are they doing this? Can we understand it? And can we find a way to either enhance it and uh, also make their lives better. Yeah. Um, what we have today is uh, um, largely rent-seeking. So the government looks at uh, the population of those who are doing cryptocurrencies and it starts thinking about how we tax them. You know, mm. um, it's, so it's also the same thinking that they have uh, t uh, um, towards other activities that's happening in the economy. So they look at the telecom, how do we tax them? They look at... Uh, uh, maybe somebody who is doing something big, once you're doing something that looks like money is coming out of there, they're thinking about how do we tax them, not how do we multiply it. Mm. If we multiply it, we will be able to have more taxes coming in from there. When you multiply something and then you formalize it, you nobody's escaping. You get So everybody is now in the net, but they are playing, um, they, are, they are doing it willingly. Uh, because you have given them the tool, you have given them the enabling environment to operate. So they are happy to return the 5% or the 2% tax that you ask them to pay or the 7.5% tax that you want them to pay. You know, so first of all is to understand what these young people are doing. You don't police them, mm -hmm. you know, uh, trying to, uh, trying to um, um, extract punitive uh, uh, measures from what they're doing, you know, like police sees the young guy with a, a, a laptop and says, oh, you are doing crypto. And then crypto becomes a, becomes a bad language. Yeah. There are times that 
there's a tendency that when you start calling something bad, people gravitate towards that bad thing because they want to. Do, it is is out of curiosity. Let's just even see what's bad inside this thing, mm -hmm. and then they keep going into it, and they don't. They then go into the good part of that thing. They start doing the bad part of that thing because they probably find out that even the bad part is paying them faster than the good part of that thing. Mm -hmm. But first of all, what you need to understand is the crypto environment. Um, which part of it is beneficial to you. Then you enhance or boost that part that is beneficial to you. Once you right. give that part a lot more publicity, a lot more leverage, the other people who are doing the wrong part, who are on the wrong part, will feel like, ah, uh -uh, we are not benefiting anything from this part. We need to come over to the, to the good mm -hmm. side. You know? So, right. and with that, with that understanding, you're able to even put in the appropriate... Uh, punishment if somebody does the wrong thing um, in that particular segment of the industry that you're trying to regulate. So it's first of all, how who are those who are managing or, or who are regulating this industry? Who are watching these young people? What are the what are the learnings that they have taken from watching them, and how right. are they applying those learnings? If they are applying them are applying them right then you will have a more thriving um, crypto environment. Yeah. South Africa, for instance, have had uh, the crypto environment for a very long time. You know, right, they have not moved to... Yes. Yeah, um, I mean, here, Jan, thank you so much for sharing your valuable contributions. I mean, I think that this is a good way to go. This is a step in the right direction. And, I mean, we just need to integrate this mainstream because, obviously, from all the things that you've said, all the things that you've highlighted, cryptocurrency is beneficial to our economic growth. So if we want to grow our economy, we definitely need to look at everything turn every stone that could help us and cryptocurrency is definitely one of those things i'm looking forward to the future i'm looking forward to the positive things that would happen in nigeria with cryptocurrency and you know any other thing that, that might just be able to help take us from where we are now and start to have a very thriving economy. Anyways, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It was so lovely having you here to discuss this with me. Thank you. Thank you so much and always a pleasure to be on the show. Always. We've also been speaking with Frank Eleanya. He's a senior financial analyst at Tech Cabal. And we've just been discussing the impact of cryptocurrency and Nigeria's economy. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with me. My name is Rome Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend.